Hey you guys, it's Crystal Shirell from Indie Artist School. Welcome to The Singer's Arsenal. So today I wanted to talk about the importance of a good vocal regimen. Now, I gotta back up a little bit to let you guys know. <laughs> so some of you guys know that I give virtual lessons, private vo voice lessons one-on-one. -on -one. Before this pandemic, it was in person and anyway, I was teaching and also performing live, but here's the deal. I wasn't taking my own advice, okay? So we're gonna go back to like 2018. And the reason why I'm going back there is because prior to this, to that year, most of my gigs were, I would say, uh, mostly like weddings or uh, proposals, just singing telegrams, things like that. So Valentine's Day or somebody wants to get married, uh, just pop up on the spot with my guitar and singing. So those were kind of sporadic. So I would say on average, I had about two to, f mm, let's say two to four gigs a month. And then there were some seasons where there was more, uh, like holidays. And then there were some seasons where it was a little bit less than that. So th those gigs were a little bit more high maintenance, a uh, big ticket, I would say. But then, you know, I really wanted something a little bit more stable for gigging. Uh, like I said, I was teaching, I was giving lessons and that was the most stable income I had at the time, which is fine. I'm not knocking it. I love teaching, but I also wanted to make sure I was still having consistency as an actual artist. So what I did was I, I don't know about you guys, but whenever I want to change something or have a goal, I write it down. So I wrote it down that I wanted a residency. Basically what a residency is, it's a gig where you go to a particular place, whatever agreement you have and you perform at a set time, every set time, set rate, and it's recurring. So it happens frequently, something you can, you can expect, predict, and all of that. So it was good. It was a good situation. But I had never had a residency before, so I really didn't know what to expect. I wasn't very specific about what kind of residency. I just wanted something regular to perform. So I get contacted by a booking agent, and that, that was my first step into uh, the world of public residency gigs. And I went into hotels. Who knew? Uh, so like refined hotels they, that had a really nice bar or a place where they had entertainment for the guests, things like that. So uh, I went and I had one of those. It started with one and it was once a week. And honestly, it was a little bit of a shock because I found out that those gigs are four hours uh, minimum, uh, three to four hours. And uh, because of the budget, uh, of these places, I couldn't really afford to book a whole band or hire, they couldn't really pay for a band. So I was solo for three to five hours, depending on what location it was. So it was a little bit, oh my gosh, I was freaking out a little bit. I was like, that is a lot, that's a long set. My first thought was, how am I gonna remember all these songs? <laughs> my second thing was, how is my voice going to keep up with this you know when you have a dj or something like that which i think a lot of places are thinking of you as like a dj it doesn't take as much out of a dj as it does to a live performer so there was a little bit of discrepancy on expectations versus what a person can do but honestly i surprised myself i pushed myself past my boundaries but i wouldn't have been able to do it without establishing a very good vocal regimen so really crazy the first gig that i had that was that long it wasn't a residency yet i didn't know it was going to be uh but it was my first you know long gig like that and i had prepped and prepped and prepped and i actually got a cold and it was really crazy because i was so nervous and stressed out that i wouldn't be able to perform but prior to that i had established a pretty good vocal routine and then i had to modify it because i was sick 
So that's one thing I will say about vocal regimens is one, you they're they're not going to be the same for every person. I think that's as you can expect, you would you wouldn't expect that to happen. But the other thing is that they need to be able to be modified so that you can adjust according to where you are vocally at that moment. If you're sick, like you don't want to be pushing through with really challenging vocal exercises um, at that time, because what that's going to do is actually uh, cause more, it's going to take your voice even longer to recover. Uh, so I did a lot of closed mouth exercises, things like stuff like that. So that's what you call a vocal warm up. Okay. So that's the first step is every vocal regimen starts with a vocal warm up. Okay. And vocal warm ups can vary. Uh, they could be raspberries where it's like you're blowing through your lips. Well, I'm going to back up from the mic and do it. Hopefully that wasn't too annoying for you to hear. Okay. So that's a raspberry. And what that does is it trains your breath and it warms up your vocal cords with minimal uh, chances of straining anything because your mouth is closed, your neck is relaxed. You honestly can't even make a raspberry if you're not projecting from your diaphragm. So it trains your breathing as well. So, okay. Made sure I had a good warm up, which was standard for every gig I ever had. Now, here's the thing I'm going to say. I, mm, this is a confession, confession time. So, over the years, I had this real bad habit of procrastinating, okay? So, like, I would say, like, say the gig is, like, six months from now. I would wait until, like, two weeks before the gig to prepare, and that's horrible. I don't recommend you do that at all. But the only way, I have to say this, the only way I was able to get away with it now, I'm not saying do this, but I'm just saying is that it wasn't like I wasn't singing throughout that time frame, okay? Like my voice was healthy only because I made a habit of doing my vocal regimen, whether I had a gig or not, okay? So the vocal regimen is not the same as rehearsing. I want to stress that. The vocal regimen is not the same as rehearsing, but the vocal regimen is imperative. Rehearsing without a strong vocal regimen is not going to improve your voice. What it's going to do is just lock in whatever bad vocal habits you have and just commit to memory, commit the songs to memory. That's really what rehearsals are going to do if you don't accompany it, accompany it with a strong vocal regimen. So vocal regimens are important because think of it like exercise, okay? So your voice is, there's a lot of muscles involved, okay? So it's like a workout. Uh, you want to be in shape. Now, consider your gigs an athletic event, okay? So you want to train for the specific event, but you also got to be in shape. Now, of course, training for the event in, in an athletic sense, you're going to be getting in shape as you do it. Uh, so it's not exactly the perfect correlation, but it's the best I could come up with right now, okay? But I do know that a regular vocal regimen will make rehearsing so much easier, guys. And that's one of the first things I, I learned. So I had that gig and I wasn't sure how I was going to do it. Uh, if you've taken my course, uh, Indie Artist Toolkit, then you know uh, the resources I use to book gigs. And um, th this is still going to go in it's still uh, valid for if you're doing virtual gigs too. It's all about uh, putting yourself out there and get getting on the right platforms and getting reviews up there so people know what it's like to work with you. And it's really like a cascading effect. You you do one gig, you'll notice the network is very small. So as long as you you know you deliver and you're on time and you're professional and you're ready, then you're good. Okay, so. That was fine. You know, I had my regular, regular old routine. I was doing my vocal regimen, but it wasn't, I wasn't adapting it or changing it. It wasn't, I didn't change it until I got my first weekly um, four hour gig and solo again, uh, playing guitar. And then it increased. Uh, if you're in Houston area, you know about rodeo season and all that and how we get a lot more people coming to the city at that time. And so they increased my frequency and I actually ended up performing, what was it? Five, five days in a row. And then there was like a two day break. And then there was two more days or something like that. Basically eight days, just straight of four 
our gigs. And so I changed my vocal regimen, okay? Honestly, um, I had to change it after I started getting weekly gigs. So what I did was I increased the length of my vocal exercises during the day, okay? And I made sure that they were challenging enough for my voice to get stronger, okay? So if, you, if your vocal exercise are, exercises are easy for you, then you've grown out of them, okay? You got to give yourself a challenge for your voice to actually improve and get stronger. So uh, let's just take a scale, for example. Um, if you're, you know, the traditional scale is very easy for you, then you might want to try the pentatonic scales and uh, you want to increase the speed, the beats per minute of that scale so that you can challenge yourself to get your, uh, your pitch accurate while also uh, even increasing the range a bit. So if you're starting with a pretty, like a two octave scale, you can increase it to maybe two and a half. And even if you can't do all of it, you want to try, see if you can improve it over the course of a month or so. And that's what I was doing. Okay. And it was a lot. It takes a lot of commitment to do this. Um, and another thing I will say is you want to cater your vocal regimen according to what issues you have with your voice. So if you find when you perform that, you know, you struggle with belting or something like that, then you want to do an exercise for belting which I like to call the ba-ba-ba's, uh, <laughs> and we do it on an arpeggio. And the reason I use the word ba is because it's big and it forces you to project loudly to get that note out. I, you know, I incorporated those, but because of the length of my gigs, I try not to uh, belt too often in the, during the show. Uh, I mean, I did belt during the show. The biggest thing that I did this is also for if you're gigging long shows, you want to give yourself some transitional periods in your set to where you can kind of do a more intimate, soft song, followed by a bigger song that's more high energy. Oh, if you do a lot of those in a row, it could be exhausting and you're going to be like, I love this, but wh what time is it? You know what I mean? <laughs> so yeah all those parts of a song that you find challenging, make sure your vocal regimen addresses that. Does that make sense? So your goal is for your set to be very easy for you to do, okay? Now, a lot of people, what they do is if the song is challenging, they will simplify it and make it easier for themselves rather than seeing if they can improve their voice to be able to do it the way it should be done or the way that they want to do it. And there's nothing wrong with simplifying if you have a short time frame and you don't have time, but I, and I tell my students this too, over time, you'll thank yourself so much for rising to the occasion. You're going to thank yourself for challenging yourself and not trying to wiggle your way out of it because a lot of people, that's why they plateau. It's why they stay the same, why their voice doesn't change. It's because they, they do what they're already good at and then they, get their, they find a way around the things they're not good at rather than making the things they're not good at their strengths. So I'm gonna go back a little bit and tell you guys something that was, that's pretty interesting. So growing up, uh, my voice has always had a more deep uh, tone to it. You can probably tell just from listening to me talk. Uh, so a lot of my songs and everything that I sang was alto level, right? Pretty, pretty deep. And honestly, I love me some Nina Simone so I can get down there to the baritone level. That's basically, you know, what a male singer, <laughs> like the mid-range male vocalist will sing. That's baritone. So that's pretty low for a woman. So I knew that my natural strength is singing lower notes. But, okay, there came a point when I said, you know what? I'm tired of wiggling my way out of high notes. And so I made it a mission to include uh, vocal exercises that really help you establish a strong head voice. And I even got into my whistle register. Whistle register has a lot of myths around it. And a lot of people think it's something you're either born with or you don't have, but I trained it. And here's an example of me singing in my whistle register on my song, What I Need.
which was really cool. I love me some Minnie Ripperton. I love me some Mariah Carey. Just putting things in there so that I could explore a whole different side of my voice. But I have to tell you, I would have never found that out if I didn't push myself to increase my vocal range by changing my vocal regimen. And here's the deal. When you're dealing with something um, that's challenging, it's gonna be like pulling teeth to do the exercise. You know what I mean? Cause you're not gonna sound good doing it. It's not exactly gonna be fun. It could be frustrating. But the thing is, the only thing you gotta commit to is to trying every day and being aware, checking in with your body. Like don't overwork yourself, you know, do it in pieces. You know, if you can't do the whole exercise, just give, you know, shorten it, you know, that and, and, and that will really help you so that over time you can improve on it. So that's one way that a vocal regimen is very helpful is by helping you expand your vocal range and have you do things that you normally wouldn't do, okay? Now, like I said, vocal regimens are not the same for every person and they're really on a case by case basis. I will say this, when I had gigs back to back to back like that, I would only do vocal warmups, not vocal exercises. Uh, and I learned this uh, through, my, through my own trial and error. I was so ambitious uh, one night that I was like, you know, I'm gonna do my regimen and then I'm gonna go perform. It was, whoo. It was so tiring. I pulled through, but it wasn't my best performance, okay? Because I did way too much leading up to it. So I, over time, I learned, okay, let me, on days I have performances, let me just do my vocal warm up and, you know, mentally go through the songs, the set list. But I'm not going to do a full on rehearsal. I'm not going to do a full on, you know, full on vocal exercises. I'm just gonna warm up my voice and trust that all of the work I put in prior to this is enough work. And that's why procrastinating is not good, okay? The re <laughs> when you procrastinate, you're not gonna be as confident that the work you put in is good enough. Even if it is, it's just like a mental thing because you know you waited till the last minute. So I stopped doing that over time. And uh, it, that really improved my performance. It allowed me to be there. If you guys ever heard my episode about nerves, yeah, that's one of those things that will really help you feel more confident if you've been working out your voice prior to it and you've rehearsed enough. And so by the time the gig comes up, piece of cake. So yeah, vocal regimens are super important. There's a lot of different vocal exercises for different things. You could do melisma exercises, which is basically for vocal runs. And basically it's just singing any type of scale, major, pentatonic, or anything like that at a faster speed so that you can improve uh, your vocal runs, which I talked about that on the vocal run episode. So if you don't know what those are, you could go ahead and check that episode out. Also, um, if you want to learn about the fundamentals of singing, you can go ahead and check out uh, my video on my YouTube channel. It's at Indie Artist School, where I talk about the, the three steps to singing. It really boils down to three things. So if you, you get vocal exercises that will help you control your breathing, uh, learning how to breathe and engage your diaphragm, and then learning how to project from your diaphragm and do vocal exercises that will help you have more control of your vocal placement, which is the third step. So yeah, having the, a good foundation, having good vocal warmups, like I said, the raspberries, the mmm. And here's another step that gets ignored is the vocal cool down, okay? Like this, changed my life like i know it sounded like i'm exaggerating but i'm serious it changed my life to start doing vocal cool downs okay i use vocal cool downs after exercises uh vocal exercises and everything and also after performing and after rehearsing like anytime my voice gets really activated vocal cool downs really help settle everything back down and it's really good to make sure that your voice stays resilient and strong and doesn't just get strained and exhausted through the process. So a good way to do a vocal cool down would be to just act like you're yawning and go from highest note to your lowest note, like ah! You know, just something just to gently go down and you could even do the, mid the middle, ah! You get softer and softer, ah! 
just like that and just relax. The whole key of a vocal cool down is not to see how high you can go or see how low you can go or how intense you can do it. Your goal of a vocal cool down is simply to relax all the muscles that you've used to sing. Okay. With the only exception to the relaxing part is going to be your diaphragm because your diaphragm needs to be engaged to control your breath. So you'll still be engaging your diaphragm, but everything else from the chest up is going to be relaxed during a vocal cool down. Uh, and there's some other fun vocal exercises you can do that, that play with intervals. Like it's like you're chewing food with your mouth closed. I love that one. It's really fun. It's calming. Uh, you could do things like that. I really hope that this information has been helpful to you and, you know, that sharing my story really gives you some some insight. So if you do want to perform, whether it's virtually or in person uh, after this, then you can use these tips so that you can uh, improve your voice as well as perform. This works at out even if you're not performing. You could be doing this daily. Just make it a habit to do a full vocal regimen. That includes a vocal warm-up, vocal exercises, and a vocal cool down. If you guys want to learn more things like this, visit my website, indie-artist.teachable.com. That's indie-artist.teachable.com. Until next time, have a wonderful day. Yeah. Yeah.